A theater in Mariupol, which served as a bomb shelter, may be the worst mass casualty site so far in this war. 300 people die in the Russian airstrike, March 16th, say city officials. Mariupol appears colorless. It hides horrors. UN monitors say one mass grave may hold 200 bodies. On both sides, troops are slogging into month two of this war with small gains and losses. Today, a Russian colonel general said phase one of the military operation was mostly complete, and it would focus its core efforts on the liberation of the Donbass region, where Ukrainian and Russian-backed forces have been fighting since 2014. Russia may be signaling a scaled-back war plan, say Western analysts. Ukraine says it pushed back Russian troops east of Kyiv, blocking off one route to the capital. But in Kharkiv, a Russian rocket attack terrified people lined up for humanitarian aid. And artillery strikes set off huge fires, one at a medical facility. In Nikolaev, Tatiana returned to her broken home. She says she'll stay in the city. We'll fight to the end as best we can, some with weapons and some with moral support. Ukraine wants more than that from the U.S. and NATO. Thank you very, very much for all you do. President Biden visited U.S. soldiers on a Polish military base close to Ukraine's border, part of NATO's mission. We're in the midst of, and I don't want to sound too philosophic here, but you're in the midst of a fight between democracies and, 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 and oligarchs. Biden has underscored on this European trip a key strategy is to keep these NATO members unified. Tomorrow in Warsaw, he'll meet some Ukrainian refugees and deliver what the White House is calling a major address on the conflict. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Lviv.